This is the Tata Harrier Red Dark Edition which is more dark outside and more red inside. The Red Dark Edition is available in only one color which happens to be this one that is Oviron Black. Meanwhile the alloy wheels are finished in charcoal black something which is there in almost every limited edition Harrier and Safari models. Even the Tata logo is now finished in black and the grille it's different and again finished in all black. There's a red insert on the grille. The grille design is obviously different from the Safari. The Safari gets this tri-star pattern. Both the front and rear brake calipers are now finished in red. The dark badging is there on both the sides right on the front fenders. Step inside and there's more red than you can imagine. Because the seats are finished in carnelian red and also gets diamond style quilting. And the dashboard gets steel black finish. Yeah, it's an all black dashboard now. The dark badging is also there on the front headdress. And that wraps up the cosmetic changes. The Harrier Red Dark Edition is available in three variants. XZ Plus, XZ A Plus and XZ A Plus option which is this one which also gets A dash. The Harrier is available in a whopping 24 variants and don't get me started on the Safari because that is available in 34 variants. Yeah, because there's a 6-seater, there's a 7-seater as well. This is a standard 5-seater. The Harrier range starts at Rs 18.29 lakhs. This being the top of the line Harrier is priced at Rs 29.37 lakhs which happens to be Rs 1.15 lakhs cheaper than the Safari Red Dark Edition. Both the Harrier and Safari are identical. Mechanically they are the same but the Harrier has almost all the features of the Safari because the Harrier now gets rear discs which means that the Harrier has dropped its cumbersome, sorry, cumbersome to use handbrake in lieu of an electric parking brake along with the auto hold function. The Safari is obviously longer because it's a three row vehicle and it has blower controls in the last row. Obviously, there's no last row here as such, so it does not have blower controls. But the Safari also gets the option of captain seats in the second row, wherein you also get seat ventilation and there's boss mode, which means that the co-driver seat has to be powered, so it is four-way power adjust in the Safari, the Harrier misses out on that as well. What I don't like is the camera angle in the Harrier because the Safari's camera angle is better. In the Harrier, this is the problem. You can clearly see the number plate which really spoils the rear view because in the Safari, this is not an issue. So I think it has to do with the way the camera is positioned or probably the way the rear is designed because to the naked eye, both the cars look very similar from the dead rear angle. You do end up paying rupees 30,000 more for the red dark edition but considering Indians love white color on their cars, it helps to keep the car cooler as well. I don't know what is Tata Motors obsession of painting all their cars black. It is just so difficult to maintain. What else is difficult to maintain is my hair. Because of the heat and dust, my hair feels dry, damaged and fizzy. I wish there was something that could give me frizz-free, smooth and shiny hair all the time with every wash. Thankfully, there is Be Blunt which is a premium hair care and styling brand. I use the Be Blunt Intense Moisture Range for my hair which nourishes my hair to make it frizz-free and soft. The shampoo and moisturizer imparts shine to give it salon-like hair and comes in a color protect formula. It has jojoba oil which is rich in vitamins and minerals. So it acts as a natural moisturizer that nourishes and strengthens hair to make it soft and shiny. Vitamin E hydrates and rejuvenates dry and flaky scalp. It also boosts hair elasticity and shine while promoting growth. The products are SLS and paraben free and are designed by hair experts to give salon-like hair at an unbelievable price of Rs 399. And now you can get a 20% discount by using my coupon code Fazbeam to buy on bblunt.com. Whenever you purchase from Bblunt's website, they will link your order to a women they empower with Samba Foundation through Bblunt Shine Academy and they are on a mission to empower 10,000 women across the nation. By the way, these products are also available on Amazon, Flipkart and Nika. Coming back to the Harrier, it's got more features now. The most important one is this new and bigger 10.25 inch touchscreen from Harman, which is up from the 8.8 .8 inch unit before. It's slicker to use, gets an AQI monitor as well and it's always telling me that the air quality is very poor. This car also gets an air purifier, there's wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto connectivity as well. In fact, the best thing is the cameras because it gets a 3D view which is just fantastic. I don't know why they have not managed to do the number plate properly because the number plate is like hanging out on the road. Maybe it gets a bit weird because of the red color so the car gets scared thinking I don't know what that is but yeah, the camera quality is actually quite good here. I don't know what is the relationship between hunger and climate but anyways this car has got 200 voice commands which work in six different languages as well. Another small feature missing in this car happens to be ambient lighting. Yeah, the option is not available here. In the Safari, it gets red ambient lighting for the red dark edition and in the regular Safari, there's blue ambient lighting. This car also gets lane watch cameras which are positioned below the outside rear view mirror. So when you give either indicator, it actually shows you a feed from that very side to prevent any sort of blind spot. The Safari red dark edition also gets cushions on the rear headrest. 
something which is missing in the Harrier Red Dark Edition. The driver's seat gets a memory function now. You can also save up to three people settings and there is a seat welcome feature too. The Harrier now gets ADAS. That is actually the radar panel which you're looking at right now. It gets automatic emergency braking along with forward collision warning which works for cyclists, pedestrians as well as vehicles. And obviously it gets lane departure warning, lane keep assist, traffic sign recognition, rear collision warning, rear cross traffic alert, door open alert, high beam assist and blind spot warning. Oh my God, that's a lot of ADAS systems in this car. The instrument cluster is also new and most of the info is now in the digital part which is a 7 inch screen. The old Harrier also got a 7 inch screen in the gauge cluster but the speedometer there was analog. Here the fuel meter, the temperature meter and the tachometer are on either side. It gets a lot more information so you can obviously see me browsing through the power and torque meter. A GeForce meter in a Harrier is it needed? I don't know, I don't think so. Now you can browse through a lot of information here but I just wish the tachometer was better. But here are four things I don't like about the Tata Harrier. Number one, ergonomics. The center console here protrudes out and your knee will hit it. It's a big design flaw this. And the center passenger in the second row does not even get a head because there is no headrest there making this car a strict four-seater. Number two, inconsistent quality. While there are some panel gaps here and there which can be forgiven, I'm not too sure if you will forgive it, but what you can't forgive is this touchscreen system which although looks amazing, sometimes has a mind of its own. Lot of customers have been complaining about issues with it. Tata Motors needs to test their cars better before commencing sales. Number 3. Powertrain Options there is no petrol yet and this diesel engine isn't even Tata's own. It's sourced from FCA. It's not very refined even at lower engine speeds because there's the diesel clatter. And as soon as you push it in the top end, it becomes very vocal. The automatic gearbox comes from Hyundai. Wait a second. What exactly comes from Tata Motors? I'm not too sure because the platform comes from Land Rover. Okay, it is actually derived and not copy pasted. But even the infotainment system comes from Harman. The speakers are from JBL. And a lot of other parts are coming from here and there. But Tata Motors has done a good job of assembling everything together. Number 4. Weird steering. It's a hydraulic unit and thus feels heavy at low speeds. But at higher speeds, it feels quite the opposite because it weirdly lightens up feels quite inconsistent in feel. Fortunately though, there are a lot of things to like about the Harrier. Here are four of them. Number one, features. Tata Motors has given this car a lot of features. Front ventilated seats, ADAS and a 360 degree parking camera really stand out on the Harrier. Number two, comfort. The second row of seat has good amount of space and both the front as well as the second row have both USB-A as well as USB-C charging ports. Number three, engine. This V8 source diesel engine might be loud but it has a lot of character and is quite powerful as well and that is the reason many brands are actually using this very engine in their cars and it also has drive Sport modes. Drive mode activated. Thank you lady. Thank you. Number 4. Warranty. Tata Motors offers 3 years 1 lakh kilometer warranty on the Harrier which is similar to what the BAP of QDR offers. Yeah, Toyota offers a similar warranty which is reassuring for customers. And this is the moment OG Fazbeamers have been waiting for. Air conditioning off, we come into drive mode, we come into sport, sport mode. Drive mode activated. And I'm actually going to turn on the camera. We're going to do the 3D view, of course, which looks really nice. Somehow it's better in the Safari because at least you don't have that green screen happening right in front. I don't know why that is there here. So I think the software is a bit messed up. By the way, I don't know what this is. Do you guys have any understanding of what exactly this is? So we are going to launch the car, which means it's time for left foot on the brake. Right foot on the accelerator, seat ventilation also needs to be turned off. Thing is now, I can't really see the seat ventilation because in bright sunlight, you don't know what setting it is on. Left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator and off we go. Acceleration is quite brisk, but somehow I was not even able to reach 100 kilometers per hour. Yeah, this is a heavy car, but doesn't feel heavy as such. It's 75 kgs lighter than the Safari. Drives like the Safari. 2 liter Cryotech diesel engine, which, oh my God, there some amount of wheels been happening. So this is producing 170 horsepower, which is good enough and 350 Newton meters of torque. Acceleration is actually quite brisk. 
turbo lag is decently well contained because of the automatic transmission it's a torque converter unit which like i was telling you source from hyundai it's slick with shifts is not very fast as such but gets the job done and somehow it's able to curtail or hide that turbo lag to a certain extent so engine is actually decently refined but it gets vocal in the top end of the rev range yeah in the top end it's very loud and you hear the diesel clatter as well some amount of wheels been again mid range is really nice and sweet but somehow it gets very boomy the suspension is not that great okay here it actually crashes through these bumps on the road see yeah you can you can feel it crashing through so that's a bit of a bummer around the corners it feels better than the safari for sure steering wheel is very inconsistent somehow so that could be better calibrated yeah there is body roll which is again better contained than the safari of course and oh my god i can feel the roll here the engine should be more refined for sure yeah somehow it's better in the compass i don't know how or why but that's that brakes are decent but the pedal feel is not that great we're going to test the brakes now that's a lot of sound coming from the brakes as well as the tires so some weird sound comes from the steering rack as well so things could be slightly better but then with indian manufacturers they are not able to get this refinement level sorted that beautifully like how other brands are able to do it so you can hear a bit of stuff coming out or rather noise coming from here and there in terms of driving feel i definitely like this car the harrier better than the safari because obviously it is lighter it's smaller it's more agile but overall ride and handling balance is decent it's not fantastic but there's this character and feel of driving this car thanks to the omega arc the oh my god front end really washes out very fast and then the car gets into understeer very quickly but then this is not how people will drive this car but if you drive this enthusiastically you can actually have some fun because definitely this is quite fun yeah because of the engine having the silence before the storm known as the turbo lag the horn by the way i'm quite surprised there's no dedicated button to unlock or lock the doors you have to do it from the other door knob that is overall the harrier drives the same as the safari there is no differentiation here grip levels are also fine three drive modes eco city and sport sport gives you the best performance of course you can manually control the gear box but it will not hold on to a gear it's telling me uh, the gear shift is denied very land rover type command there telling me that you know you can't make a shift right now see how it crashes through manhole covers so yes the suspension isn't that refined things could be slightly better in that regard i don't know why uh, <laughs> the suspension is so noisy here but then i think we have hit a sort of a dead end so we are just going to take a reverse here i love the camera yaar even in this bright light now it is so easy to see what's around because of the camera being so beautifully designed the camera system is actually fantastic come on camera turn on yeah there it is Surely this car has more feel than the XUV 700. <laughs> Just notice the suspension noise and all. Some somehow I feel the suspension is better on this car compared to the Safari. With the oh there wheels been with the Safari na uh, I think they've softened the suspension because of the added weight and the third row because of which. Kind of feels a little more bouncy. This one feels better glued to the road somehow, and I think that's about it. Ground clearance is not an issue. You obviously have got these multiple drive modes in case you want to take this car off road. It can go a little bit there as well because uh, ESP has multiple modes. I think 14, 18 modes. Oh God, <laughs> bad roads. It feels indestructible, but then it shakes you all over the place on the inside. And the top speed is, I think, around 170 kilometers per hour. This has a 50 liter fuel tank. Fuel efficiency is somewhere between 10 to 15 kilometers per liter, depending on your driving style. Drive like a lunatic, like I am right now. <laughs> Expect the mileage to drop significantly to single digit numbers, but I think that's a non-issue because the engine actually shouldn't give you any trouble. It is obviously from FCA, and then we know how good that engine is or this engine is. Only thing is, they need to work on the lag and they need to work on the insulation levels. and i wish there was a traction control button which i could turn off and wheel spin <laughs> like crazy
Can you hear the diesel clatter? And the ride might be a bit noisy because the suspension is noisy and the steering might be inconsistent. But you can do such things because the platform is very robust. You can just get in wherever you feel like because the car just feels super robust. <laughs> Check that fake SUVs. Not that this is any real because there's no four wheel drive here, of course, but at least you can go like this. Oh, I'm going to break something today, I think. <laughs> Tata Motors is continuously improving the higher, which is a good thing. The red dark edition looks sporty and the added features definitely up the appeal of the Harrier significantly. I just hope Tata Motors sends both the Harrier as well as the Safari for global end cap crash test because that is the only thing which is awaited now. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to check out the awesome moisture range from Be Blunt by clicking on the top right corner of the screen. Bye bye. Cut, 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 cut.